This is the St. Lawrence River at Montreal. It's the gateway to the world's largest freshwater ecosystem, the Great Lakes. You wouldn't know it, but right beneath these waters, there's an ecological battlefield. Wars are being fought, wars for space, wars for resources, wars between exotic and native species, and uh, we're not sure who's winning. Biological invasion is an ancient process. It's been around since the, throughout the entire history of life on the planet. Species have always changed their ranges. They've always spread into new regions. But what's happening now is fundamentally different in terms of rate and spatial scale. When ships cross the high seas, they have to carry weight so as to avoid bobbing like a cork. And this weight is provided in the ballast tanks. At any given moment, it's been estimated that between 5,000 and 10,000 species are in motion in ship ballast tanks around the world. These species are taken up in the water at the home port when the ship is taken on ballast water and are discharged at the new port of call. One helpful way to think about it is to start big, sort of think globally, and realize that every port on Earth is connected by shipping. Maybe directly, if a ship goes from point A to B, maybe indirectly, if a ship has gone to other ports in between. So the potential exists for a species in any port on Earth to be delivered to the Great Lakes region. So the study of these species combines understanding trade and human movements of species with the ecology of these species. Today we're in the Solange Canal. It's just uh, west of Montreal, about 45 minutes. Solange Canal is just off of the St. Lawrence River. And today we're going to be jumping into the water, sampling the wall to look at the composition of the zebra and the quagga mussel along the wall here. Zebra mussel is an exotic mussel that was introduced in the late 1980s into the Great Lakes through ballast water. They have since spread up into the St. Lawrence River area along with the quagga mussel. They are both invasive species. They've come from the Black and Caspian Seas. And they, although they're closely related, there are subtle differences between the two species. And one of the things is looking at who comes in and colonizes first, looking at differences in species life history traits that can help to predict which species are going to be more successful. So right now we're processing the samples that were taken from the Solange Canal. We have about a 12-year data set, so we're documenting the change in the mussel composition in that area. There used to be a high abundance of native mussels, and now oftentimes what you'll see is just a, a whole bunch of empty native mussel shells littering the bottom uh, where they once used to be. So with the native mussels sitting in the sediment from here, we have an exposed hard substrate to which zebra mussels and quagga mussels can attach themselves onto the hard substrates of the native mussels. The problem with this is that you get enough zebra and quagga mussels attached to the native mussel, therefore suturing the two valves together. This mussel can no longer filter feed, and sometimes even due to the sheer weight of the other uh, exotic mussels on it, it topples into the substrate and can no longer uh, feed, and thus it uh, dies. Essentially what we're seeing here is an ecological takeover. Over the past two centuries, nearly 200 species that we know about have become established in the Great Lakes. These species have replaced native species, have become pests economically and ecologically, have fouled industrial water supply systems, have fouled municipal water supply systems, have posed a threat to fisheries. Unless shipping is very well controlled, unless we have a more effective way at keeping species that are delivered through ballast water or keeping them out, then we can assume that invasions will continue. Many of the species we're concerned about do come from other continents, but many of them also come from other parts of North America. All right, I got it. What do we got? got Plenty of rusty surprise, crayfish, surprise. it looks like. Don't see any native crayfish yet. Probably won't. 
it's useful to think about these invasions just like we think about a flu virus or any other infectious disease moving across the country. When there's a lake close to your lake that's infected, that means that you're now much more likely to be infected. Rusty crayfish are actually native to the Ohio River area of Ohio and parts of Kentucky, some parts of Indiana, and they were moved up to this area in the upper Midwest, most likely by anglers who used them as bait for fishing. A lot of times when species are transported just a few hundred miles, they can have very significant impacts. Rusty crayfish essentially clear cut the whole bottom. That's very important because vegetation serves as the food base for lots of other organisms and also as habitat for small fishes. So when rusty crayfish come out, all you are left with is pretty much a lake with lots of rusty crayfish and not much else. What we're working on now is a technique in which we could combine intensive trapping with increasing the numbers of predatory fish that would make the reduction in crayfish sustainable. Got some? Oh yeah. Awesome. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, today we are collecting fishes um, using fike netting and we're going to perform gastric lavage, a non-lethal method of examining the stomach contents of the fish. Jody, the next one is a smallmouth bass. All right. 296 grams. We're most interested in knowing which fish species and what sizes of fish species are eating what sizes of crayfish. Now you can see the crayfish claw. Oh yeah, there. that's definitely crayfish. Yep, he's clear. And with that information, we will be able to uh, determine what fish community will be most effective at controlling rusty crayfish. We invest so much effort and resources in studying invasive species because they are one of the top five causes of changes in ecosystems globally. In fact, the changes that invasive species are causing proceed much more rapidly than climate change. With the increased scientific understanding that's come from recent research, we are helping to uh, guide legislation that would address the ballast water pathway and other pathways that bring species that will be harmful to these natural ecosystems.